You know, actually, it's funny enough talking about this episode because uh, I saw on my Facebook uh, notifications uh, me talking about, oh no, Paris Hilton's going to be in an episode of Supernatural. At least to say, I'm, I'm still surprised it's actually as good as it is. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, this is my review for episode 5 of Supernatural Season 5, Fallen Idol. This is an episode where the brothers come across... A few little weird things of people's histories uh, or his, uh, fascinations with history coming back and killing them are kind of idols in that sense. You either get Gandhi, Abe Lincoln, or in this episode, Paris Hilton. Funny enough, this episode falls in the same position as Monster Movie did with season four being the fifth episode and just kind of being a random one-off about a really odd thing, but still kind of an enjoyable one. Admittedly, this one isn't as funny as Monster Movie as I would say, basically because of what Monster Movie was trying to do. This one's just funny in general, just with the idea of Abraham Lincoln killing that guy. I love it. It was like, you're supposed to be dead. And it's just this Abraham Lincoln coming at him with a... It's a little odd seeing James Dean's car, not really his car, kill that one guy. I will say it does take a good long while before you really get to the crux of the episode being a monster that is used to being uh, worshipped as a god and essentially taking the forms of former idols or former people of interest to then eat other people. What really makes this episode kind of intriguing to me now is the passage of time because it makes me think of what uh, Gillian Anderson's character was in uh, American Gods just kind of being the Ephesus of media and then there's that other god I think which is like the god of social media or whatever but imagine that creature being able to tap into the internet. It's kind of the same when there's that depressive episode in, in season three where Dean thinks he's hearing his father again but it's actually it's this monster that's just using phone lines and the internet to connect with people and use their their depression and their their sadness to feed off of it this thing could do the exact same thing with the internet if anything it's kind of a variation of that creature but in a different sense however now actually literally just saying that out loud maybe this episode isn't as in as intelligent as I thought it was because it's just kind of a rehash of that episode from season three but it's still enjoyable it's still well put together there's a little bit of more dynamic between the two brothers especially with Sam trying to get back on the basically on the same level of his brother if anything Sam is the one who actually is the one who breaks the case really be really speaking in terms of how this episode progresses and with the monster and figuring out all that business Sam is really the one that takes hold again and you feel them back on even level Ever towards the end of the episode, and I do, I do enjoy that. I really like how it ends with Dean thro throwing him the keys and saying, "Hey, you drive." And Sam's like, "Yeah, let's go down fighting and let's try and do what we can." And Dean's like, "I can get on board with that." I like how the episode ends with the two just, you know, getting back together and coming together as a team. In the end, Fallen Idols is fun. It's enjoyable. There's some good humor, and Paris Hilton's in it, and it's it's not bad. If anything, she completely plays off of all the stereotypes that she was. And my God, it's a bit of a mind boggle to remember that this the whole thing about her and just all the media the, the, the was it the simple life that was a thing i hated it <laughs> but yeah no i like how she plays off of all of those stereotypes about her and she does it with complete class in terms of just being like you know what fuck it make fun of me let's make fun of myself so i, I like that i thought that was kind of you know, grown up of her, considering what I thought of her previous. I think this episode turned my opinion about her around. It's a 4 out of 7. It's a pretty standard episode. As I was kind of going through the origins of this character, this monster, and then comparing it to the one from Season 3, it kind of brings it down from a 5 to a 4 to me, because I literally was able to break a writing wall within the, within the review as I'm doing it. But either way, it's still a fun episode. It's probably going to be the lightest episode in terms of content throughout this season, if I'm correct, but we'll see as we go. Anyways, I wanted to ask you guys what you thought about this episode, so let's read those off now. This may be my favorite guest appearance of Paris Hilton in anything. I love that she had the nerve to play herself as a waxwork, as well as a god that no one cared about anymore. Maybe she didn't get the irony, then again, she must have. It was really hard to miss. In a nutshell, I give this episode a 4 out of 7, which, yeah, exactly what I gave it. No, I actually think that she full in goes into it, and I think that's what makes the episode just that little bit much better, is that she's very self-aware of that episode. It turned my whole opinion of her around, actually, after that episode. 
Fallen Idols is definitely an interesting filler episode about how people's idols kill them in horrific ways. And I love how Leisha brings up celebrities as a form of modern idol tree. We unironically see how the fan base has worshipped Jared and Jensen with the ground they walk on. Another side of this episode that is really appreciated is Sam's development and his honesty with Dean about why he left with Ruby because how he felt his relationship with Dean, Dean was not a two-way street. You can certainly re-watch the previous episodes and see how a lot of that is true and it makes the rewatchability much more refreshing in that way. It's a shame we never got to see the Leisha take shape of John Winchester to fight the boys but I always had a funny visual in my head of John Winchester in Paris Hilton's dress wailing on Sam and Dean beheading him. That it would have been a funny bit. Uh, they Obviously they couldn't have afforded him. I do like that idea that there is that kind of ironic symmetry in terms of like you said how the fan base worship jared and jensen now which is it's just all around ironic well jeremy it shouldn't be hard to know what your top five worst episodes is going to be because fallen idols is such a forgettable episode the whole idea of this episode is just man i can actually confirm this is not the worst one of the season but yes it is in this list dude you got your ass kicked by paris hilton fantastic little bit so funny Fallen Idols episode is the first forgettable episode of season 5. Sam and Dean go on a hunt with learning wheels so that they could learn how to work as a functioning, functioning team again. And that's basically the episode in a nutshell. However, the episode is a little bit bland. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I will definitely say it took a while and there's only like a couple of episodes like this. It's, technically speaking, there are two episodes like this episode in the entirety of season 5. So take comfort in that, I guess. Like you, I consider Season 5 to be the best, and that's mostly due to the fact there are only three bad episodes. Unfortunately, Fallen Idols is one of them. I'm actually kind of interested to see what your other two are, because I wonder if they're going to be the same as mine. This episode is a filler episode with admittedly great concept. Ghosts of famous people are killing their fans. What's not to like about it? Where the episode falls apart is the casting of Paris Hilton as a trickster god. When you literally have the worst actress of all time and the winner of multiple Razzies, including worst actress of the decade, do you really expect to buy her as a performance? No, of course not. The only reason she is here is because Jared starred with her in that awful House of Wax remake back when he thought he had a movie career, but that coming on the heels of the latest episode where Sam and Dean try to work decide to work together in this episode they go for they go for some reason backwards all in all the episode of potential but ultimately ruined by reality actually like I said I think actually this is probably the best performance she ever gave in anything I I actually enjoy how self-aware she is in this episode and I actually enjoy her presence in this episode like you I had that that came that same sort of opinion of her her music's terrible um her acting in all the other movies has been definitely terrible. The House of Wax movie in general is a bad movie. But I thought that this was the best one because it takes a lot to be very self-aware of yourself and I, get, I applaud her for doing that. Not too thrilling of an episode. You can see that Dean doesn't fully trust Sam yet and is lying to him about a fresh start. Luckily that, doesn't, uh, that does get resolved by the episode's end. This episode was most likely centered around making fun of House of Wax in a very Supernatural-esque way, even going as far as having Paris Hilton as antagonist. Also, the fourth wall-breaking joke of Dean saying, I've never seen House of Wax, and the look that he, Jared gives him. Not as good as the Gilmore Girls one from a few seasons ago, but ba pretty hilarious. Yep, that was also a pretty good bit too, that, that self-awareness. I, I do like when this episode does when Supernatural can dip into that self-realization because we're obviously going to very much steer away from that for later on. Fallen Idols is a good entertaining episode. I absolutely love the fight scene between Sam and Gandhi. That was pretty funny. And seeing Dan Dean get his butt kicked by Paris Hilton was just so funny. To me, the fight scenes in the early seasons of Supernatural were just so great. Well, it helps that they weren't just throw against the wall. Um, there's going to be a few fight scenes later on with Castiel and just the brothers in general with the demons and whatnot that are very well done in this season. Now for the next episode, this one is going to have a lot of interesting comments because a lot of you guys know we're going to talk about this kid. And yes, I know, why didn't they bring Jesse back? I have a pretty decent answer for that, but I'll wait for you guys to give me yours and then I'll give mine in the next episode review. But yeah, give me you guys' thoughts about I Believe the Children in Our Future. That's the one with the Antichrist kid. The Antichrist Kid before we got an adult acting like an Antichrist Kid. Anyways, guys, that's all from me. Hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next week. Thanks for watching the video. My name is Nitz, and you might remember me from the animated cult classic TV show, Undergrads. 
It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the Click is finally getting back together in an all-new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.